Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back YouTubers and Madden fans, this is Mad Money Shot, Sniff of the Mad Cheese as always. Got another full breakdown video for you, this is going to be the last one for the season because next month Madden 21 comes out. So I figured it would make sense to do the uh, the Madden 21 cover athlete uh, in one of the better Madden 20 books and that's uh, the Baltimore Ravens. This isn't going to be a two part series, if you could hook me up with a like that'd be great, but I'm going to do it all in one video today. So this is the entire Baltimore Ravens offense, a lot of great trick plays, one of the best running playbooks pistol playbooks, iPhone playbooks, you name it. Uh, so if you want to if you want to continue with these uh, series of, you know, putting out a free ebook a month uh, when next season starts, let me know in the comment section and hit the like button cuz I'll definitely try to keep doing that. Other than that's going let's get right into the video. Next up we have the PA flood. This play here is all about that B route. That B route's going to get open against most things. Uh, I don't know. It's just a really, it's a really shake and bake route. I mean, it just shakes defenders whether it's man or zone. And the only other route that really worth anything on this play would be the, uh, the fullback. But you can see, I mean, this guy is just, you know, whether it's man or zone, he's just, he's just shaking wide, especially against man. I mean, that'll be, that'll be the real, um, yeah, the real value. As you can see here, I'm gonna pass lead up in just a way, just in case that defender got in the way. But you can see that's, it's really all about that route. Next up, we get the PA Power O. It's just a good high-low play with the uh, the fullback would probably be my first read, um, but the B route. You can see how the B route pull, pulls coverage down um, as well. So the tight end's pretty much it's pretty much a high-low between the flat, the the drag, and the tight end. The, uh, the 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 X route there. I'd rather put him on an in round than smart route. Him. He'll be a really re late uh, late release checkdown. Uh, but you can see, I mean, it's really just, it's really just, it's just the high-low play. That's really all there is to it. There's nothing else really. It's not, you know, nothing crazy. You just have to watch how they shade uh, as far as coverage goes. So here we got a man coverage. So I know Alston can beat this. X is not a man coverage. I guess they were just showing something else. But you can see he's open to just get a really bad throw uh, from Cam. I find if you motion out, um, you know, Amani too. I mean, really, this is this will have the exact same effect, uh, but it'll pull coverage even more. For Olsen, as you can see, I mean, the, the, the cornerback or whoever really has to, to, to hold that down. So that'll that'll help in that regard. Uh, but it's not it's not 100% necessary. If you run it as is, though, and um, you don't um, make your determination quick enough, a lot of times the speed of the slot receiver will catch up to what RB is doing. So, you know, to me, in that scenario, it's better just to, just to motion out the fullback. Next up, we have the power alert smoke. So the formation gives away the coverage. If it's a man coverage, I want to run it. If it's his own coverage, I typically want to throw it. As you can see right there, he shoots inside. Uh, if I would have held it a little bit longer, I might have got him to commit even more. So you have to watch that. But if the, if the, you don't have to do that if it's man or zone. Obviously right there it was a zone coverage, but the, the cornerback was in so far that I could get the edge. Just typically that's the rule of thumb. So like I say right here, we have that cornerback out far. You know what I'm saying? If I wait, he gets blocked out of the play. And then I'm going to get, you know, the most out of it. It's not necessarily the best RPO, but it's a good one. Power runs a lot of times are more inside runs than outside runs. Um, as you can see, I mean, even against zone, it's still a successful play. But you can't really run the, the, the bubble against man. So like I said right here, I can get this, you know, I can make a play out of this pretty much every time. But you can see how the backside linebacker comes in uh, to, uh, to get the running back. So in that scenario, it would make the most sense to hit the, uh, to hit the screen. But uh, the run play is successful. So right here, I know I have a man coverage, so I can just hit this run play. There's no cornerback outside, and I'll have my most success against that. So like I said, right here, we got a zone. I wait for that guy to commit a little bit, and I'm just getting what I can get. You know what I'm saying? This is a good bread and butter play. It's not a great like a home run play or nothing like that. Next up, we get the halfback counter weak. One of the better, more consistent run plays this year are counter plays. Um, as you can see, I mean, I just... It's just uh, you're really making one read at the line, the defensive end. You're kind of just reading whether he crashes outside or goes inside, and you just do the opposite. So if he crashes outside, like right here, i got to go inside. Even if that hole is slight, it's still going to be my best option. As you can see, I get about five yards there. Uh, but typically, like I said, right there, he holds up. I'm going to go outside. You know what I'm saying? Go outside all that traffic uh, and make it, make a big play to the outside. I mean, it's really simple read, one play, a one-player read. 
Um, that's pretty much it. So right here, he crashes it. He crashes down. Got to go inside of that block. Uh, the defensive tackle got off, though, which typically won't happen. So like I said, I'm just reading that end. That's pretty much it. There he holds up, so I'm going outside. Could have probably waited for the fullback there, but I wanted to get as much as I could get. I'm going against a user. A lot of times I'll motion this guy out just to make him think that's where the play is going, confuse him a little bit. Um, but to me, it's best to run as is. But you can make that type of uh, fake motions just to get your opponent thinking about that. Next up, we got the fullback dive. Like I said, you're going to want to you know, have a good power back, maybe with some speed, and just hand it to him inside at the fullback position. You don't want to necessarily have your fullback here. Um, but you definitely want to have... You know somebody that's a, a good running back and you can see you can get some big lanes it's a quick play too it's like an instant play right up the gut um, and it's just you know nine times out of ten if you need a couple yards you'll get it with this play next up we got the halfback toss if i could toss this play i mean if i could flip this play based off the fact that that extra defender just dropped down i would but you can't so i mean toss plays are kind of cheesy so they kind of limit them sometimes and you can see how that shuts it down but typically um just running this play stock uh is a pretty good setup you can see i mean speed to the edge you know is all you really need an elite back you make a dude miss and then you're, you're taking a toss play to the house and that's why like i said they they limit the amount of adjustments you can make on a lot of toss plays um but you know you can run it as is you don't have to make any motions but motioning out that tight end a lot of times can help next up we got the post shot go ahead and let's pick that all we're gonna do is gonna motion in more here and a lot of times he'll get open right away inside um you know certain coverages I, I was hoping to hit for him to slant inside there through a little bit earlier but he still got open crossing tight ends are going to get open against a lot of things uh thomas is probably going to be your best man beater the check down uh, but you know it's ultimately you know that 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 drag route pulls down a lot of the coverages that'll get the uh, olsen open um so you really have those two guys and then your check downs you know all three of these routes should get open every time I'm trying to get that that X route a little bit more. You can see, I mean, they just don't know, you know, who to go to. They, these coverage linebackers, they they go in between um, the high and the low tight ends. Uh, so you basically just got to pick whichever one they don't. It's that simple, man. Man, the longer he was in coverage, the worse it got. Let's go and let's do this again. Like I said, a lot of times, this guy typically when motioned in will get a free release, which means he'll get open pretty much, you know, <laughs> nine times out of ten because he's got that inside release from the from the cornerback. One more time. I said that inside release is, is important. It's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> As you see right there, it's a big one. Next up out of the single back bunch base, we got the Z spot. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my B route on a streak. I can also put this guy, the, the, the square route on an in route or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But basically, I mean, if, it's, if this guy's open right away, I'm going to work my way back. If he's open right away, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. Put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer, the inside. The inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we got the bench. This play right here, I mean, I went over this in previous formations. These, these outside routes, I mean, that was a bad throw. He didn't catch it, but you can see he was open. Whether it's cover two, cover three, even cover four, these routes tend to get there. And then you also have your, your, your you know, your little out routes here, which get open. I mean, this is just a really, really good play this year. Uh, one of my more favorite, I would say. Uh, I'll definitely be running it. I probably should have threw the man. I, that was, I threw the double coverage right there. That wasn't the best move. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce a couple times. Like I said, that uh, they chip off the deeper route. I'll take the underneath and catch and run all game. Here go, here go. So one more time. 
and there we go like i said that's i mean i'll take that underneath route it's it's there next up out of the single back deuce close we got the counter weak these counter plays they're all productive except for when you got a, a blitz like that coming into it but i still got outside of it because <laughs> like i said the blocking's pretty sticky but you're really once again you're just reading this outside guy if he hesitates you're taking it outside you know what i'm saying if he, if he crashes outside and takes himself out of the play you're going inside uh, but you really can't lose like right there hesitated so i'm gonna sprint outside although this guy's right at my butt right behind me but i still got 10 yards without even trying maybe more i'm not sure i fell forward um so these these counter plays are all pretty good right there boom he's waiting dude's waiting to get blocked he's gonna go right down the field look at that really easy play really good run formation you're gonna see a lot of good run plays in this. and then that right there he goes inside so i had he went outside so i had to go inside but there was a guy waiting it's not always going to be the way so he's waiting again waiting to get blocked and i'm just gonna juke that dude out of his shoes i'm not gonna get tackled by the first guy next up we got the halfback wham i'm not a huge fan of wham plays but um you know i mean it's a, it's a good enough play i'm just not really a wham person it's not really the play i like to run but i always point it out because there's a lot of people that swear by this play um you know and there's i'm sure there's different i mean it's like it's almost like a trap play i, I personally am not a huge trap play person either i don't really think that's the way this year either but like i said i'm always going to call this play out just in case there are people that like to run this but it is a good run play you can see i get a good couple yards inside um you know anytime you have you know traps and wham plays they're they're, they're pretty decent um, you know, but like right there. So I finally get my big run, but I'm always trying to bounce it outside anyway. <laughs> but still, you can see there's definitely times you're going to have holes. So let's do that again. I got a guy coming off the edge. We'll see if that messes things up. Like I said, sticky blocking inside, so I'm going to take it outside. Uh, find my own path. Definitely a huge cutback lane. So like I said, good play. Maybe it's just me on the sticks, though. I don't know, because that was definitely not where the play was designed to go. So guys coming down again one more time. <laughs> And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's definitely a good play. Like I said, you got to make your own path, but there's definitely some sticky blocking in there. Let's do that one more time. Like I said, there's the inside. And I'm going to make that dude miss and make him hesitate. And I'm gone. So the halfback wham, definitely a good play. I take back everything I said earlier in the video. N nasty run. I'm getting lots of big time runs inside. Next up, the single back deuce close. We got the PA X post cross. It's just going to be a cover four, one play touchdown. You just have to motion this guy out. That's pretty much it. You don't really have to do anything else. Um, and you pretty much have a play right here. You just have to buy time. Uh, and then once he gets inside of that free safety, he's going to be gone. You know what I mean? Just pass lead and pull it across. Pull it away. And that's pretty much it. If you want to, you can always drag the A route or something like that. Um, you know, that's always at, that's always at your discretion for another check down. The running back's going to be a pretty good check down. But it's really about when you throw the ball. So, moving on. Next up, we got the halfback wham. This is an interesting play. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the wham plays, but there are a lot of people out there that are. It's a good play. It's a good inside run. This is a good inside run. I mean, you mix this in with the toss play. Um, and it's just it's gonna be a good combination. I mean like right there I had to take it outside just to get a little bit extra But um, but yeah, these wham plays are nice. I mean, they're definitely unique um, You know not a lot of playbooks necessarily have them But to me, you know, I, I just think it, it's not my favorite inside play But for some people it's really popular for some people. They really like these wham plays So I'll take that outside, you know, what I'm saying like I find like the like it, it, it the blocking inside is pretty sticky so you can take it outside a lot of times and get big big carries. I'm always looking for ways to bounce it outside or to get bigger runs. I'm not necessarily going to be happy with just a couple yards. Next up, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you can run just like this, I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, he got lit up there, man. Like he punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but, yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. Here we, go. Here, we go. Here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh man, just gotta hold that block down, man. Just gotta hold that block down. So I'm gonna try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there. I guess I got a little bit better, a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. 
Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver's always been so successful for me, is it, is it backs away the cornerback, and then we get a nice, big, easy run. So we're going to do that one more time. Motion him out. And then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motioning him out. Like I said, cornerback drops off. And it's going to make it easier for me. And I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat, that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker. Son of a bitch. It's like right here. He dropped down, so I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no. He, uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see it's a much easier run play with um, with the motion, which matches a lot of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. So you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just he's just playing lights out. He's really ready, disrupting ready, some ready, things. <laughs> I'm motioning over the wrong guy, but it don't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up, we got the fade smash. So if it's a cover two, you can run it as is. I'm going to put the B route on a drag just in case it's man. Because I don't necessarily have a lot of man beaters. Uh, but like I said, if it is a cover two, which you can tell, um, it's just going to get outside of the cover two. Any other zone, you're going to have to streak um, the outside route so that he can get outside of it. But if it's like a man coverage, like right here, I mean, he's getting, you know, that was actually his zone, but he, he ran and he trailed it. That might have been part of the new patch, but uh, it's still, you know, like I said, right here, like we have, uh, it's just getting outside of that. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is, but... So here we go. Like I said, any other any other zone, you have to go that route. This is a man coverage. You guys are pretty good man beaters with the Olsen and with the uh, the drag or the in route, whatever you decide there. I actually think blocking the running back makes sense uh, too, because I haven't been doing that. But here we go. So we have another. Oof. Blocking the running back is a good look. I don't find he really does anything more than get in the way. So here we go one more time. Looks like we got another man coverage or what? Maybe it was his own. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, you have good options over the middle. So here we go one more time. So this is probably a cover too. So I don't think I should have streaked that. I shouldn't have streaked that route, but it didn't matter. So make sure, since that's the money route, make sure you have a, a fast receiver there. Yeah, he actually it was a cover too, but since he got jammed coming off, that's why it still worked. So here we go. This is probably a cover not really sure, but like I said, he gets outside of it. So just get that streak going, and he'll get outside of just about any zone coverage. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Just make sure your fastest receiver is at the slot, um, and a lot of times you'll have a really good play. I mean, it's a consistent run. These jet sweeps and a lot of formations are really good runs. Um, so ultimately, I you know I throw this in every once in a while. Against man coverage is going to be good because uh, you can see like the I mean against zone coverage necessarily be good because the man coverage sometimes can follow across when you're motioning, uh, which can make it a little bit tougher. Uh, but ultimately, I mean this is just like I said, especially against zone, really good play, really consistent. Cover two man can get in the way as he did right there, but I still got five yards. So even if you take a loss, you're not taking much of a loss. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. You're kind of just watching what the defender in front of the uh, the Y route's doing. Uh, here's a cover three, so I would say it's definitely going to be best to get it across to him. I don't have a fast guy there, uh, but you definitely want to have a speedster at that spot. So like I said, a cover three and off coverage like that, you're going to want to do that. Um, this is a good run play, though. You know what I mean? Like like some of these uh, RPOs don't have a good run play, but the stretch is a really good run play. So if I read that I have an outside you know, shot like right there, I, had an, I have an outside blocker, I can go this route real quick you know what I'm saying and it's obviously a really big play if I don't have outside like I said a cover three then I want to go to the uh, the bubble but like I said I'm getting a lot of a lot of looks where I have an outside an outside guy I didn't really accelerate too fast there but I still had a good play if I don't have the edge I'm just gonna watch that bubble like right there I didn't have the edge the run the, the, the even the uh, the safety on the other side committed and I'm gonna hit that bubble screen real simple play 
Next up, we got the counter week. Like I said, I'm big on these counters. This play is no exception. Uh, right there, he almost caught me up, though, as you can see. I mean, he crashed in enough to create a problem. But after that, it was just <laughs> just me sprinting through the hole. Like I said, anytime that defensive end crashes down hard like that, you just get inside and you go. So right there, crashes in again. Like I said, he had a, he had a partner this time, though. But, you know, he's, he's well, like I said, he crashes outside like that. You just go inside, typically have a lane. If he hesitates, you just wait for your blocker to engage, like right there. He engages, so you just get outside. Real simple concept. A good play to have in your arsenal. Next up, we got the four verticals. This play here, I mean, all I'm going to do is motion this guy out. Uh, if it's a cover two, like this looks like it's a cover two. <laughs> Um, I'm going to drag this uh, the receiver under, and it should give me a throwing window. Uh, good job holding on to it there, but it's going to be a tight window. Still going to be worthwhile. Here we go. Looks like we have a cover one man. Um, a lot of times the RD route will beat that up the side as well, although maybe it's not a cover one man. It looks like it might be another cover, cover two. Um, as you can see, uh, that drag once again gets that coverage of how I want it. Cover three here most likely. Um, same setup. Only this time I'm going to just throw it a little bit prior. It's like I'm not going to wait until it gets down the field. I'm just going to throw it to him short. Like I said, this verticals play, uh, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Like I said, this the way he dropped back, I can tell I'm probably going to be able to throw the ball in front of him. Sure enough, I'm right, but it was a horrible accuracy throw. You have to worry about that. Sometimes when you throw it too quickly, that happens. So go ahead and let's do that again. It looks like we have a cover one man this time, if I had to guess. And sure enough, we do. I'm going to go ahead and wait until he turns up the field. Like I said, you're not necessarily going to always win that because he's the one a cornerback. But, you know, if you have a fast tight end, you can take that shot. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Nothing really to this play. Just going to, you know, we're just going to sprint to the sideline. That's it. Um, once you get out there, I mean, you're going to get like 10, 15 easy pretty much every time. Some of these jet sweeps, uh, they just seem like they can't fail. And then we're just going to, like I said, you don't want to get too close to the line. You'll get those guys off their blocks to tackle you if you get too close. So you're just going to sprint the line. Second you get the ball, just sprint this line straight across. And then, you know, like I said, you're not going to get, like, home runs, but you're definitely going to get, um, you know, like I said, a good 10, 15-yard average on these uh, without a doubt. So let's go and let's move on. Next up, we got the PA seam. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the B route. Now I got a high low with the A and the B route. A lot of times the B route will pull the coverage down, making the A route route wide open. The comeback route's gonna be um, your your most consistent play. Obviously, you know your your the tight end though it, it's gonna be up there as well. Uh, but you know you have everything you need really. That RB route's gonna pull coverage quite a bit. I said that comeback route, putting in work. Um, it's always going to be putting in work, and you know your drag is going to be another safe check down, if needed. Like I said, here's man. Anytime you got man, though, that comeback route's going to be the beater. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. This play right here, I mean, you just—it's just a regular stretch play. Three tight ends blocking on the one side is going to be good for any play. You have the option if you want to pull the ball down though, and throw it over this side here. You know what I'm saying? To keep your opponent off their toes. I mean, they're going to be overcompensating to the uh, the three tight end side anyway. So it's not a bad it's not a bad play to try to hit them on the other side and definitely give them something to think about. Next up, we got the stretch alert X looky. Now this is to me a little bit more um, the type of run play that's going to break off a big run. This is more of a, a big run run play. Uh, and you can see, I mean, the blocking just missed right there. And I'm still going to get a big carry. Um, but I could have got it. I probably could have easily housed it if that running or if that receiver would have hit that safety. But this is probably the best run play in the in, in the package based off of how, how explosive the, the carry can be. And if for whatever reason, say they're loading the, the, the side you're running to, you can throw to the receiver. The receiver's a decent option. If they're loading up the one side, you could always pull it back. Like right there, that was a double safety blitz. So I don't want to set, you know, necessarily run into that. Um, so you have your option. I mean, if it looks like you come to the line and there's no real run lanes, obviously you can just hit the pass. Next up, we got the corner strike. 
Here we go. Here we go. Right, it. So the corner strike, I just like putting the, the A route on a streak. I typically want the ball to be a little bit closer to the center because I could also hit the hit the running back here. But if he runs out of room, it's not really going to work. So like I said, streak the A route. You see, this here looks like, I'm not sure if that was a man or a cover three or what, but typically I'm working my way back from Olsen. I'm going to start at the tight end in the flat. So if he's open, I mean, I'll take it. Like I said, right here, I don't know, that might be a man coverage. He's definitely late to get over. If I had a faster tight end, it'd be nice. I could catch and run that. But if he's open, I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to take it. Other than that, um, there's a couple other scenarios. Like I said, the B route here will beat man pretty well. It'll beat a lot of cover threes. The corner strikes back, man. I think it's actually a pretty good play uh, this year compared to a couple years past where they really tried to break it. This year, I don't, like I said, I don't know what that is. He's going to come in front of that and catch that. It's a pretty hard route to cover. So, you know, this is an old, old trick, but it's back, it's working. You just got to have a fast receiver. I don't know, he probably could have housed that if I'd have turned up the field a little bit better. But that's pretty much it. I'm just working the, the high and the low. The A route there, I mean, that can beat like, right here. Cover three seams, you're still going to be able to hit that. Even a cover two scenario, a lot of times you're going to be able to hit that A route. That's pretty much going to be the reads. And then the running back on the other side, I don't even really bother because, like I said, I have that on this side as I make a, a bad read there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why I made a bad read because I was looking at the running back side So I would keep this I would split the field in half. Don't worry about the routes on the left side Just worry about the routes on the right side Next up out of the pistol bunch. We got the halfback counter. I like these counter plays this year. They're really official I mean you definitely have the ability um, to break some big runs off of these counter plays and they've been you know counter plays have been good for a long time But I feel like the blocking hasn't been as smooth as it is now uh, You can see this type of counter play though It can be a little bit tricky because you don't necessarily your blocker doesn't necessarily get over there in time for that type of play uh, In that scenario you almost want to motion him over and get him get him over there right away So he can get that block immediately and then he runs off anyway So this isn't necessarily the best counter play, but it is, it is definitely a, a good run to have in this formation Next up, we got the PA boot slide. I like this play stock. Um, if, you know, the best route without a doubt is the corner route, whether it's man or zone. That corner route's going to bail you out pretty much every time if you throw it on timing. If you throw the timing on it right. Other than that, though, I mean, there's some really good, really good routes crossing the field. Uh, the B route is. I don't know if I got overthrew that or not, but you can see he was wide open. It was a bad throw, but it was, he was wide open. Uh, but that's you know you're gonna see that like I said right here once again all these routes are gonna pull your users down your you know your your computer zones down and it's gonna get that B route open quite a bit and like I said right I mean it, it's it's definitely the most consistent but you can see like the underneath routes are gonna be good as well so don't disregard them I know that wasn't the best time to choose it but um, I'd say against like cover threes a lot of times the A route or the RB or the R route. Um, and then, like I said, I mean, this, I'm just, I just keep oh, it's getting bad throws, bad accuracy throws. I definitely think you're going to see the B route open the most. Um, but if your user, for whatever reason, takes that or you keep getting bad accuracy because I'm kind of throwing it quick off my back foot, um, you're going to have to hit the, uh, the comeback route. Like I said, if it's not there, the comeback route typically is, um, like I said, just throw it on timing. Like I said, right there, boom, just throw it. Throw it as he's cutting back. Throw it as he's slowing into his break and cutting back, and you'll get it every time. Next up, we got the PA deep in. So all I'm going to do here, I mean, I can do a couple things. I can put A on a slant, or I can put him on an in route. Typically, I like to slant him and then drag the B route, and you can see how you really have three different levels. The, the, a, the B route, obviously, is going to be open, but I'm going to try for the big play, which is going to be Olsen. If it's a cover three, I find putting this guy on an out route and then smart routing it um, can really help the RB route get past. Um, as you can see right here, I mean, I don't know if he's got the speed, but he does. So, like I said, you can get a cover three touchdown play out of this as well. So that's the two variations, or the three variations, rather. Like I said, if you like the in-route version, which, I don't know. I feel like I could get more out of it than that. Um, here we go. Got to cover two, perhaps, and then Olsen comes down with a tight catch. So let's go ahead and let's move on. Next up, we got the read option weak. So we're just reading the, uh, the, the the defensive end, like right there. He takes the running back, uh, so I can hold it with the quarterback. I probably should have went a little bit wider. Uh, quarterbacks have a tendency to fumble, so make sure um, that you're doing this in the mindset that you can uh, slide. So, like I said, just reading that end. He didn't, you know, the end crashes in. You see how? I mean, the whole, the whole, the whole, <laughs> everything opens up right over the middle if you if you make the right read. So once again, crashes in. I'm going to take that. Like I said, that fullback, the way that fullback comes around, or that tight end, rather, does a really good job of sealing. 
So over here, like I said, he's crashing in. I'm going to take that. Nothing but space. You know what I mean? If I have a real speed quarterback, like I said, quarterbacks do fumble. got to be careful of that. But if I have a real speed quarterback, I can be gone. So here, there, there, I got to make my determination. Get to uh, get to McCaffrey. Like I said, really big lanes all over the field on this play. So like I said, right there, he's holding up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is just really, really explosive potential. Like I said, there he crashes in. Look at that. Look how look how wide of space I have. <laughs> if I have, if I'm using the Ravens as a team, I mean, this is gonna be. If I have Lamar Jackson, I mean, come on, man, look at that. Like I said, that that tight end just does a really great job of being a lead blocker. You really got to blitz somebody running a play like this. So like I said, right there, look at that. I mean, we just have huge space for the quarterback. Quarterback and running back. Like I said, if he doesn't, if that guy holds up, like I said, right there. That's the block I need right there. That, that tight end on that safety. And then I'm just getting big run plays all game. Next up, we got the Seattle. This play right here, all I really want to do is put uh, more here on the drag. Um, you can put him on a slant as well, but I find the drag's best. Then I'm going to motion this guy out, and that's pretty much the play. If it's a cover three, uh, he's going to be a play. If it's a cover two, like this one is, that's why you got the guy on the drag, because he's essentially going to pull the defense, uh, the cornerback down on the cover two, and that's going to make a big play for cover twos like that. Um, but like I said, cover threes also, you're going to see um, you know, a, a quick strike option in a cover three. I don't know, this is actually a cover one or cover zero, which is gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna bomb it up. This route pretty much is gonna get the work every time. And it's gonna be a big play just about every time. So here we go. This looks like it's gonna be a cover three. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna since I know it's not a cover two, I'm gonna put more on a slant that just makes it just a little bit more aggressive. And then like I said, if it's a cover three, you're gonna get that quick strike down the sideline rather than um, you know waiting. So this here, like I said, this is probably a cover two or some sort of variation of a cover six or a cover nine, probably. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play for the big play, and there it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just gotta get past. Oh, he caught him. Like I said, Keanu needs a pretty good safety out there. He's doing his job, but uh, overall, it's not gonna be that way every time. I mean, a lot of times he's gonna get past. He's gonna make that play. Um, so here we go. Probably cover zero or cover one. And we're just going to bomb it up to our fastest guy. You know what I'm saying? So that play right there, that's pretty much the route every time. You have other, you have other routes, though. And when you, and when you put this, this running back out, or this receiver out like this, a lot of times they'll get open like the A route. Although I guess that's a man. You can see they're, not, they're definitely not as consistent. But they're there, so don't don't disregard them. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're gonna be, there's going to be times where the RB route is just going straight up the scene by himself. Obviously, though, this is just, this is like stealing. <laughs> this is obviously the play. So let's go and let's move on. Next up out of the pistol bunch, we got the spacing. So these type of plays, you're pretty much just reading from right to left. And when I say that, I mean like the, the tight end first because he's going to be the furthest route to the right, then the B route, then the A route, and then last but not least, uh, more. If it's a man coverage, more is pretty much going to be the best option. Although Hogan can get open immediately against man, you just have to make a quick determination. Uh, but the a, the RB route is going to be my first read. If he's open in space, I'm going to take that. If he's not, I'm working my way inside. So like I said, right here, he's just working my way across the A route. He had the most space right away. I don't know if that was a man or not, but like I said, I'm just really looking for space. It's a quick read play. You can't necessarily um, take your time. Like I said, right here, I mean, I, I, I accidentally, I don't want to say accidentally, but I did take my time there. I accidentally said you can't take your time, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to wait to make, you know, to see where these routes determine. You know what I mean? Like that, like that defender he, there, he was on the B route, but I could tell he wasn't going to sit on it, and then eventually shot to the to the to the, uh, to the flat. So, like I said, this is the type of play you really have to um, have to lab. Uh, the, 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 that, was the, that was the man coverage. He was in front of him the whole way, but that's your man beer is your slant. Like I said, this is a play. You definitely want to lab the timing of this play. So, like I said, right there, they're sitting on that route. We got our man coverage. He didn't hold on to it, uh, but I probably could have waited a little while. But against man coverage, you know, this is definitely going to be best against zone. But you have some good man options with, um, with, the, uh, with, the, with the two routes over the middle. Good short yardage play as well for uh, red zone. Next up, we got the PA cross shot. This is a cover four beater. I would say just block the RB route. Um, you know, so you can have. I mean, your other routes are, are pretty good checkdowns. Ooh, as I'm running for my life here. And we're gonna. T that was not the plan, <laughs> but it worked out. You can see it still gets behind the coverage. 
Um, that's you know I'm gonna watch the replay though because that was that was not as it was intended. But like I said, you can see the receiver ultimately gets behind the coverage one way or the other. But I typically want to throw it like right about here, you know. But you can see how the the field split in half, and he's so far he's so far behind these other guys. But luckily, um, <laughs> luckily he, uh, he he kept running that route, so I, I made it past that anyway. But I want the extra blocking, so like I said, I'm gonna block RB. I have a flat beater, I have you know the B route. And I'm just like I said, I'm waiting until it gets past and I'm just bombing it up. And you can see it's like 60 or 60 yards in the air, so you're gonna need a lot of space. But ultimately, you know, that this place it's pretty easy. Like I said, the, the, the circle route too, or the B route rather, you know, that'll get open over the middle as well. Uh, your user might be taking that pl that play away though, but who, it doesn't matter because like I said, you're, you're trying to call this when they're when they're running a lot of cover fours. Next up, we got the Ravens, the PA Raven Flood. So against cover four, all I'm going to do is put Samuel on in route and then smart route him. And you're going to have a one play TD against cover four. This motion here um, doesn't really change the play too much. Uh, but you can see how that in route really pulls that safety in and down and makes the, helps get this receiver passed. You can also smart route the X route to make that route or that uh, that uh, that route even better, uh, but it has to be within like 10 yards of the play. So like I said, right here, wait till it gets past that safety, throwing it up over the top. I actually, shouldn't I should roll towards the throw to get a better throw to get more separation. So I'm, if I want to do that, I want to slide my protection in that direction. So here we go, one more time. I'm gonna roll out this time in that direction. So like I said, that'll help. And then like I said, we get a much bigger window. As you can see right there, it just gets passed. So rolling in the direction, throwing it from close to the line of scrimmage are, are the best way. Next up out of the pistol full house base, we have the Ravens counter lead. This play can run just like this. Um, I find you can also, you know, use some motions with the fullback and the tight end in front of you. I find it's best to motion this guy to the line, but it's really a weird setup. I mean, he, yeah, I've never seen a formation line like that, so I don't know. It's kind of glitchy, but uh, you can see it's it, it helps it helps spring the play a little bit more and ra rather than waiting for him to come across, which a lot of times he is jumbled up amongst his own linemen anyway, as you can see right there. Like I, said, I wish he went to the line of scrimmage, but it helps with the point of attack a little bit better. Next up at the pistol spray, we got the jet touch pass. So I'm gonna pick that. So you know, you can see this is just an average sweep play, a jet sweep. Uh, can be pretty successful, especially if you can spread the defense with the four wide look. Um, you know, you, you can you can definitely find some running lanes. Um, but you just want to you know sprint. I mean, I'm not really using a great running receiver for this but you see you can just sprint to the sideline and turn up I think right probably is a 90 speed um, if he is he's not much higher than that but like I said it's all you need it's good enough and it's a good trick play to throw in so we're gonna do this one more time like I said you can see the consistency of it for whatever reason receivers are really good blockers <laughs> and once I get past the line I'm pretty much golden so there we go. Uh, we, we finally, finally got somebody that catches us, but I still got about four yards just by making a guy miss. So if you have a really dynamic receiver, obviously this is a good play to run. Just make sure you substitute that guy before you before you pick the play. Next up, we get the wide shallow cross. So all I want to do is put the uh, you know put uh, more on a smart route. Put the the B route and in route and then smart route it against cover four. This will be a one play TD. I probably should have pass blocked the uh, the running back, but it still worked out. So we you know oh he didn't catch it though. It was a little bit of a bad throw. Typically I want to roll in that direction as well. But let's pass block that running back. Give ourselves a little bit more um, more pass blocking. But like I said, I want to roll in that direction if I can, uh, and it'll shorten the throw as you can see right there. I mean he gets passed, but if I roll in the direction, I'll get open even more. I also forgot to smart route him. So there we go right there. Like I said, pass block that running back. Slide protection. You know what I'm saying? I'm really spreading this defense out as well. 
So like I said, I really can't roll as much as I want to based off of that defensive end getting outside. But you can see if I do get over there, I do get more open and, and an easier throw. Next up, we got the zone alert bubble. So right here, I mean, I can tell I don't really have the running option. You can tell just by the spacing. Uh, but ultimately, you have to read this defensive player. If he crashes in like he did there, got to take that screen play. Um, like I said, a lot of times that's going to be the play when I don't have, I don't necessarily have the spacing that I want. And you can see it's really consistent to get something. If I motion over one of these receivers, they turn into a, uh, a smoke route. So it won't give me the, the blocking advantage. But that's fine because it will help me out in regards to pulling that coverage back. You can see right there. So there, now he has a receiver in the area that's going to pull him more every time. So that's an option, but then if you're going to run it, you don't have as much blocking to that side. So something to think about, but you have you have options. Ultimately, the bubble screen is probably going to be the best play every time. Next up, we got the Zone Alert X Smoke. It's another play where, you know, like right here, I can tell already it's probably better to run it because I had that cover three safety coming down the box. But you're essentially just looking for an advantage. Um, like I said, right here now, it's probably best going to be that advantage because they have one-on-one -on -one outside to get that off. Didn't quite get the biggest play, but that'll typically be your read. So right here, I mean, this is like, you know, I'm, watch I'm also watching that defender. You know what I mean? If he, if, he, if he crashes inside or depending on what he does will depend on whether or not this gets open. Against man coverage, you typically want to run it. Against cover two, a lot of times they'll play in. Like I said, right here, I'll hold it. Yeah, the tight end actually, or the, not the tight end, the, uh, the, 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 line, or the lineman came out and actually helped the block. Um, but, you know, this is just, I guess right there, they're coming in. Wait till that block engages. Um, you could also motion over one of these guys. They'll turn into a receiver, though, but that'll help to get the, um, the X route open. And it'll give away the formation coverage as well. So I know it's a man coverage. Typically against man, you want to run it. It's not the best run play, but it's, it's going to get shut down if you do the bubble screen. So, you know, decent play. Next up, we got the halfback counter. These counter plays, based on the formation, can be really good. Um, it's, it, you know, obviously the blocking. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they don't take the right angle. Sometimes they don't block the right guy. But if they do, it's a really explosive play. I'd recommend this. This particular counter is pretty good. Um, you know, I'd recommend that over, um, you know, quite a few. I mean, anytime you have multiple big packages like um, your, your tight ends and your fullbacks, it's going to be more successful. Uh, the read's really easy. All I'm doing is reading that defensive end slash outside linebacker. If that linebacker crashes down like that, I got to slow up, take it inside. Got a nice run regardless. But if he hesitates and tries to play the corner, then I just got to take it outside, wait for the block. Like right here, I got to wait for the block to hit him. And then I just get an outside lane. Uh, but it's you know it's, a, it's consistent. Close, you're getting close to 10 yards every time. Very consistent run play. Next up, we got the PA boot left tackle. No adjustments needed here. Uh, pretty good spacing play. You know what I'm saying? We have... Uh, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I mean, that was... The coverage just disappeared. Uh, but yeah, this is just a good good spacing play. You got your comeback route, which is going to gonna beat everything, essentially. That's what that comeback route does if you time it right. Um, you know, so you'll have that in your pocket no matter what. And then you're really trying to hit this A route. You're trying to play that across the A route. They get a little bit close together, but it's still workable. The only thing here that really beats man coverage, though, is the comeback route, so just remember that. Although, that was a man, and Olsen beat it pretty badly. So, you know, maybe maybe that's wrong. But there's definitely, you know, for the most part, your most consistent route is going to be that comeback. Ooh, man, they just send that heat. So, let's do this one more time. Let's say we're looking for that A route if I can get it. And, ooh, we get a block, too. I'll take that. Said if I, if I had a faster tight end, who knows? Who knows? He might have been gone. Ready, ready, ready. Next up, we get the halfback dive. Ready, ready, Just wanted to see how good this play is. It's an inside run, but with such heavy blocking, you can see now there's going to be it's going to be a hole. I mean, they're going to create a hole for you one way or the, one way or the other. And like I said, you could always cut it back. I mean, there's just so much going on inside. There's so much separation inside. Ready. No real adjustment needed. Um, it's just like I said, the blocking. It's pretty stout, you know. what I'm saying I'm, I'm getting an advantage off of that, you know, off of the the size advantage that I have. They're just they're just holding the point of attack pretty well. I don't typically point out dive plays unless they're really 
like I said, unless there's some, I'm getting some serious push. So this is a definite, you know, typically a dive play like this that can get you five to 10. This consistently uh, deserves a little uh, attention. Let's go ahead, like I said, like a, a lot of it's like, you know, right there, I was almost like a, <laughs> I just, I took it outside, but you can just see how this, this formation just holds it down. It's just such a sticky block in formation. Next up, we got the PA boot left tackle. This play here, I mean, if I can motion over this guy, it'll give him a little bit of a head start. And a lot of times, he'll get open under, like, cover threes or, you know, you name it. He'll just get forgotten in the formation. But you can see, I mean, he, his route is kind of, you know, it's kind of stiff or he's kind of stiff. So I want to run this from as far to the, to the right hash mark as possible so I don't have him just catching it and running out of bounds like that. Comeback route's going to be one of the most consistent plays on the field, um, without a doubt. I mean, he's, you know, that's just going to beat man coverage, zone, you name it. I mean, that's just, you know, the, the, the comeback route in these formations are really are really powerful. I'm also blocking the running back because I don't want that play action to happen. Let's go ahead and let's do this again. Like I said, I, I don't want to just, I mean, the comeback route, that was, that was a hard flat, so the comeback route was just wide open. I don't want to just keep hitting the comeback route, though, because these tight ends can get open as well. Um, you don't have to. I mean, the way this because um, you can you don't have to motion over the fullback because his route is just so you know long to the sideline. That's probably why they have it on the on the right side. But I find that it'll it'll give him a little advantage in, in, in beating coverage to have him um, to have him over there because like I said, right there he's just getting covered right away. And you can see um, you know that was a man coverage too. He's not going to beat man coverage. He's going to be a little more consistent against zone coverage. So we're getting a lot of mans though. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Like the man coverage is you're pretty much stuck. If, if you see a man coverage, you gotta go to the, the comeback route. That's pretty much it. But the zone coverage is these other receivers have a shot. Oh, we're gonna go? We're gonna go? Oh no, man. Olsen, Olsen. <laughs> so close. So close to the big play, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. Next up, we got the PA fullback rub flat. The rub flub. So nothing really to change here. I, I think um, you know I would I wanted wanted to motion in the uh, the tight end or the uh, receiver, but you can see it's a pretty good setup as far as the routes go. Um, but like I said, I like to bring this guy in a little bit, and he'll be a little bit more effective, especially getting across the formation, across the defense, um, which is where the uh, the really good plays will be. As you can see, I got a nice big play right there. He works the high low also with the fullback. Um, your drag might be your best option against uh, against man coverages. But we're gonna find out. Like I said, right here. I mean, he's just he's behind the defense to an extent, as you can see, comes up the big play. Um, but he gets across. Like I said, he just gets across the field really fast, and and you know, gives a lot of coverages problems. So I'm just gonna uh, uh, <laughs> wait a little long. Wait a little long to throw that ball. You could always um, put the RB route on a streak to try to pull for that for that receiver, try to pull coverage for that guy. But you can see, I mean, he's beating he's beating man. Like typically, these routes don't beat man this year, but he's beating man really well. And more than likely, the user on defense will be covering one of the tight ends, probably also in the middle of the field. Um, so it won't, you know, they won't necessarily be be covering this really quick hit, <laughs> this really quick hitting route streaking across the back side of the field. Go ahead and do this one more time. That fullback's been open in the flat quite a bit, but I just haven't really looked his way. Because like I said, this receiver is just, just streaming across the back is so money. Next up, we got the PA scissors. Like I said, I'm going to switch out a running back here. Get somebody with a little bit of speed because we're getting into the passing plays. Here we go. Here we go. So, I mean, if it's a cover two, obviously Olsen's going to be the guy. Um, if it's a cover three, he can be the guy. Uh, I would say just put uh, put the B route on a streak, and you'll see, um, you know, he'll have more success against cover three, like right here. This is a cover three, but he gets outside of it because of that streaking uh, tight end. But if it's a cover two, it's a regular cover two, just leave it as is. 
you have your high low. I mean, this this guy here, like I said, I switched out with a with a with a little bit more of a speedy guy. I would say drag the uh, the X receiver there, just so you have another option um, for man coverages. Now there, that was another cover three, but like I said, he gets outside. It's a tight window, but he's there. Next up, out of the pistol strong I wing, we got the uh, the stretch alert X looky. So I mean, this obviously, you know, the stretch play is going to be, um, you know, one of the the best parts of this. Uh, you don't have a ton of stretch plays otherwise, um, you know. But this is um, this is obviously it's an overpowered formation to one side. I mean, two tight ends, fullback, you name it. And then you have the option to throw back across. You know, that's um, you know. So if the if the stretch isn't looking promising, I mean, you can keep your opponent on his toes. Just with the option of, of throwing. Oof. Next up, we have the power option. So here you can see, I mean, flipping it out, the quarterback then becomes a blocker. So, you know, that'll probably be the best way to do it. It's not the most consistent play, but if you have someone like Lamar Jackson or something like that, I mean, you might be able to, uh, you know, get more out of this because Cam's not necessarily the fastest guy to the edge. So if he hesitates like that, that'd be best. And like I said, can turning into a blocker is helpful. So this can be a consistent play if you run it right. And like I said, I don't want to run it. You know, if I had Christian McCaffrey run it too, it'd probably be better. I still got McCaffrey at fullback. I'm running with the backup right now. But you can see right there, I mean, he would have took that play to the edge pretty quickly. Um, and like I said, it's a good play. I mean, you can see it's a pretty consistent play. Next up, we got the Ravens power. So, you know, this this play right here, I mean, it's a good run. It's nothing crazy. But, you know, this formation as a whole has some pretty decent run plays. Um, you can see, I mean, right there, they actually glitched right into it. And I get a, I get a pretty big carry. But uh, ultimately, it's one of the better run, run plays in this formation. So let's just go ahead. Let's get that block. And, you know, I, I prefer something that's a little bit more outside. But, like I said, you got to mix it up. You got to have inside runs and outside runs. Next up, we got the fade smash. If you have a, uh, a cover two, like this might be, you can leave it as is, and the B route will a lot of times get uh, get open up the seam right there. I mean, obviously, you know, the coverage pulled back, so I take the underneath route. So here we go. Like I said, if you want to get open against any zone, you can just streak them. You can streak that outside route, and he'll get outside of it. Typically cover three, cover four. If it's a man coverage, though, like I said, this is not a really good man-beating play. Uh, I could just drag him or something like that just to kind of... Oh, it wasn't a man. It wasn't. <laughs> it was actually a cover two. It's like I said, you can see why he was wide open against cover two. So, like I said, the deep the, 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 the uh, computer likes to throw some curveballs. So, here we go. Like I said, streak him. He'll get open outside of it. Pretty much any zone coverage. I can also just drag the the tight end. That'll be my option just to restart the play if it is as, if it is a man coverage. Because like I said, he doesn't really beat man coverage. And then you can see how it pulls the coverage linebacker down even more. So that'd be the best way to do it. Drag him. Like I said, then the B route's gonna pretty much get open against anything. Here it looks like I might have a step with that with that zero cover uh, man. So I can always go up top as well. So good play. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. This here's another wrinkle in this formation. I mean, you have, you know, you're essentially just going to try to bounce it outside. Just a little bit of patience there. You know what I'm saying? that It was it was caving in around me, but I, I you know, used some patience to get out of it. Uh, but you want your fastest guy here. I mean, I think I have my 95 speed guy here. Um, and if you don't, if it doesn't work out, I mean, if you don't get much, say you take a loss, you're not taking much of a loss. So that's what makes this play, you know, it's a very livable risk. This plays very low risk, high reward, um, because it's right behind the line of scrimmage. So, you know, it's just like, it's nothing if I take a yard or two lost. Next up, we got the PA levels. Make sure you have a, a fast receiving back of some kind at the fullback spot here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the running back on a pass block. And then, um, you know, essentially just motion out this running back. Uh, if it's a cover three like this looks like it is, well, actually, no, it's cover one, my bad. But either way, he's going he's gonna to be the read. I mean, these 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 uh, wheel routes are really glitchy against pretty much any coverage. It's just different times that you're going to want to throw it. Let's 
but I'm going to do this again. I don't know. It looks like it might be like a cover four or cover six or something like that. Uh, but like I said, I mean, he's just, you know, he's just dropping back into no man's land. He can take it underneath. You don't always have to go past. But, um, you know, there's some really good plays to be had here. Uh, if it's a cover two, um, you know, like which I'm expecting at some point. You know, there we go. We're just going to take the take the check down there. Uh, he was covering that all the way back. And then, obviously, um, you know, get some blocking downfield. And we're getting another big play. So it's not always here. we got the blitz and safeties. So I can tell it's going to be a cover zero. So I'm just going to block everybody. We can turn up field. And can we get past it again? Yes, we can. So, like I said, all out blitzes, cover one man's, cover two, cover three, cover four, you name it. This is player's going to do it. Here's another cover. Uh, I don't know, maybe a cover zero. It's obviously a man coverage of some kind. I'll go ahead and I'll just buy my time again. Like I said, I'm just getting space there. Oh, I, didn't, I probably should have threw that a little bit earlier. I also would like to, to streak this um, this tight end because I I just want him a, I just want that little bit more separation. It's ultimately the goal. And if he's streaking, I'll get it. So here we go. I don't know. It might have been cover zero again. Maybe maybe a cover one man. I'm not sure. It's a touchdown though. That's the bottom line. So this is looking like. So this is looking like cover three. So I'll probably have that underneath. And sure enough, I do, but it's a bad throw. It's all good, though. I probably had to wait just a little bit longer. Next up, we got the power option. Essentially a sweep play. You know, you're just, you're essentially just, you know, you're going to hold it with the quarterback as long as possible before flipping it out to your speed back. You know, and sometimes, I mean, if your quarterback gets lit up quick, it's going to be a problem. If you get a man coverage, you'll have the most favorable scenario. I'd say in this play, you know, you really don't want to hold the ball with the quarterback too long because um, it kind of takes away the angle. You really have a sweet spot on when you want to get rid of this ball, which is like right around here, and then just kind of hit the guns uh, with McCaffrey. Next up, we got the Stretch Alert Dragon. This play here, I mean, you have two different receiving options. Um, if it's a man coverage, obviously, since there's no cornerback on the right side, pretty much always going to want to run the stretch. Unless there's like a blitz and safety out there. But you have two options as far as the pass plays, which makes this play really unique. Like if it's a cover three coverage, where this guy actually looked like he's blitzing, you can throw it out to the flat. Um, he had to hesitate because of the run formation. I mean... They're pretty glitchy. I mean, they're hard for 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 these these defenses to um, to figure out. You know, what I mean, like they don't know whether it's they don't know whether it's run or pass until the ball's in the running back's hands. I mean, this is, you know, pretty 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 good pretty good play pretty good play. Um, if I can just get that block out there. <laughs> so the stretch is really strong. The throws the throwbacks are really strong. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I can race there right there. I mean, you can, you can, I, I held it to the last minute, but you can see how successful this play is. So, just, I, I mean, as I'm doing this, I'm pre snap, I'm looking at what do I got on the run play, and then post snap, I'm looking at, you know, these, these routes down here, you know, like right there, like that guy, he just shot inside. I'm gonna go to the replay. The pre snap, I'm diagnosing, like, do I have the edge? And I really don't because of that cornerback, but I know I can probably get a few yards. And then post snap, I'm staring at this guy. Because this guy's going to determine what's going on with the, with a possible pass. He shoots inside, so I know right away I can hit the, the hit this flat. Um, he, I also probably could. I mean, realistically, I'm reading it like that. I probably could have hit the the X route too, but you know I'm going to take the quicker one. Obviously, he would try to recover anyway. But then I'm catching and I'm turning up the field. So really good play. Next up, we got the triple option. Here go, here go. This play here, I mean, I'm going I'm to find it's going to be best to hold it with the quarterback as long as possible before you get out to your speed guy. The quarterback's not, you know, I don't have a very fast quarterback, but they slow the quarterback down in these read option plays anyway. Um, but like I said, I mean, if I if I can, depending on depending on the direction that I'm facing when I get the when I give the ball to McCaffrey, will really depend on the direction he's facing. So if I'm facing upfield, he'll be facing upfield. 
If I'm facing outside, he'll be facing outside. That's why I want to make sure that I get to that outside before I get that flip off. If you do give it to this guy, just kind of sprint across the formation, I'd say would be the best way to go. Go the exact opposite way. Don't go up the center of the field. So right here we got that cover three safety, so I don't really think it's going to be the best play. So here we go. Like I said, they, they went cover three side. I went the opposite side of the cover three safety. It's that simple. So I can feel like this is going to be probably the best option as well. So we're just getting, you know. These triple, I really like the triple options. You got to lab them. You got you to gotta learn how to how to do them. Uh, with timing and rhythm of the play and whatnot. Um, but like I said, I mean, if you're going to go this other way, you just got to hold the A button and you're going to go outside. Typically is the best run. But you can figure it out pre-snap. Like I don't, you know, like right here, I could I could take it either way pre-snap. Although I actually, uh, <laughs> wasn't, that, that, didn't, that didn't work out as planned and I should have took it to the house on top of it. Make your diagnosis quick. Like I said, pre-snap. You know, I, I I didn't trust that receiver blocking that that linebacker, and I was right to. So here we go. I said they're they're crashing inside. Just got to get outside. And man, two guys, two guys there. Not one of you all can block them. Next up, we got the triple option slip. So here you're gonna want your uh, your your speed guy at the fullback spot, which again, which is what I've had him at for the most part, because most of the the best plays to this are to the fullback for some reason. Um, but you know, it, it's just uh, it's an easy play. Like I said, I'm gonna I'll, I'll keep it with the quarterback as long as possible. You can see right there. I mean, there's a definite speed difference to McCaffrey's game than there is to the quarterback's game. Um, but I'm gonna hold it with that quarterback as long as possible. The, the, the pitch play is really where it's at. Like I said, right there. I mean, I, I can tell. You know, I, I I didn't read that too good. I was trying to get that safety at an angle, but it didn't work out. But there's definitely, um, you know, like I said, the blocking really clutch, clusters clusters up and clogs up to the point where I can run this pitch. Here we go, here we go. I mean, you could also, if you give it to this guy, you know, he's got a decent, he's got a decent uh, chance to make a play. You just want to run the opposite direction. Next up, we got the F lead read option. Pretty much he's going to give it to the back. No. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the back's going to be the safest play, but you can see, I mean, the the quarterback can definitely break him but uh you know he's just he's going to be less consistent i would say well here we go one more time like i said you typically find it's best to keep with the quarterback um so hopefully you have a, a good running quarterback or one that doesn't fumble cam newton's not much of a fumbler um but you know that's that's really where the big play lies Next up out of the pistol week I we got the halfback zone week. Nothing too crazy, you just run it as it is. I find that it works if you just kind of take it to the gap. gap. You, you don't really want to go up the field like it's suggesting in the diagram. Um, you could always motion over a receiver, but I don't find it necessary. Like I said, I mean this this, this play it almost works like a, it almost works like a counterplay the way the way you have, you have to read this defensive end. If he kicks outside, you kick inside. If he doesn't, you know what I'm saying, you can just go right up the middle right there. That was a little bit clustered, though. So if he had defense, like I said, he's going to kick it outside. He's going to blow, blow him out of the play. I'm just going to go ahead and run up the middle. You know what I'm saying? Take it to the outside, get the biggest run possible, and it's a really nice play. Really simple play at that. I mean, right there. I mean, I probably like, I messed that whole thing up, man. <laughs> if I, I, I would have took it outside a little bit more. I would have been gone. Here you go, here you go. Oh man! Like I said, I, I I just I tried to I tried to get skinny between that block instead of just doing what makes sense and going outside. Let's go. Let's do this again. Like I said, right there. I want to reach that gap. That was a perfect block. He didn't hold it very long, but I'll take it. Big run, easy play. Next up, we got the PA comebacks. The the route that's going to be the most successful is going to be the comeback route. The Y route here, though, I mean, that's a nice little catch and run underneath pretty much every time. Um, it's a good setup. You have you have a very well spread apart play. I'd say putting B on an, on an in route here is the only adjustment I would make so you have a couple different levels. And then, like, the play that I said is going to bail you out the most is going to be the comeback route. That's going to be open pretty much every time, no matter what, what the coverage is, it'll be there. But you're just working these other routes. Um, you know, like I said, the triangle, they, they just back off of it a lot. I'll take it, you know what I'm saying? Should put a should put a running back there, like I typically forget to do. But you know, he'll he'll make a big play. Um, big catch and run. Like I said, good check down here. Coming across the middle. You could drag him too if you want, you know what I mean? But I, I like the in route. 
It's better spacing. So here we go. Got that comeback route. Waiting on that comeback route. You know, like I said, that'll always be there. There's not really a coverage for that. So doing this one more time. I said they're going to fall back. Try to take away that comeback route. It would have been there anyway. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They could try to take it away all they wanted. It'd still be there if you throw it right. So, one more time. Like I said, oh, definitely got the comeback route coming. <laughs> it's like you're kind of playing the high-low between the fullback and the comeback route for the most part. You're just watching that outside cornerback, what they do. Like I said, the comeback route's going to be there regardless. That was not the best throw, but you can see it still, it still worked out. You know what I'm saying? I want to throw it in the break, but it still worked out. So, moving on. Next up, we got the triple option. These option plays are money. I mean, I'm just going to, you know, <laughs> I don't even have, a, once again, I don't have a running back in, but you can see how good this play is. Um, you know, I typically want to take it outside, but the hole was just, it's just getting blown up right there. <laughs> like I said, if I put a running back in here, this would be incredibly overpowered. Um, I just forgot. I, I, <laughs> that was the plan. Uh, but you can see, I mean, there's just huge lanes. Like I said, no running back to run. I just got a, a slow tight end, a slow fullback doing it. But uh, that's that's probably my number one option right here. It is taking this outside. Sometimes the holes are up the middle. Sometimes you got to stretch it out. You'll know. Take the first hole you see. I mean, that's essentially uh, the idea. If it's not there, you'll have to sprint outside. Like I said, if I had a faster back, I probably would have had that had a much better result there. Other than that, I mean, I haven't even really messed with, you know, the ability to flip it to the other side. I mean, that was a weird catch by McCaffrey. Or else he would have had definitely a couple yards or more there. Definitely the best play of this, of this you know, to do in this particular play is, is give it to the what it's considered the fullback, but like I said, I would definitely put a running back there. Other than that, I mean, you have your option, especially if they follow like this, that you can make a really big play out of holding it with the quarterback as long as possible before flipping it out to Christian McCaffrey. So explosive plays on both sides. These triple options are so dirty to do. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Let's say, oh, <laughs> like I said, this guy, he's not a running back, but he's getting it done big time. And don't force it. If there's a lane in front of you, take what's in front of you. If you have to bounce it outside, I mean, typically you want to take the angle you're bouncing it outside. That's probably going to be the most consistent angle. But like I said, don't you know? Don't force it. Oh, I totally blew that. <laughs> because I just don't have a ton of confidence in this non-running back running back. But without a doubt, the the first play, the first handoff is the safe play. You're really watching the tight end and the right tackle. If they engage, if they engage, you're going to get that type of result. Except there's players right in front of them. If they engage, you're, you're, you're done. But see, they like the safety didn't get engaged, so I should have should have went the opposite way. But that's basically what you're watching: is the furthest defender getting engaged on the left side pre-snap. If not, you got to go the other way. <laughs> so like right here, there's no defender outside of that outside linebacker. It's pretty obvious that I can, you, typically I'm going to make that. I didn't work there though. Like they said, there's no pre-snap. There's no defender outside of this linebacker, so that's going to be the best play. No pre-snap way to go with it. So once again, there's no you know the outside linebacker is the furthest guy. My tackle should get the block. My tight end should get the block, and I'm taking this up the field for a big 20-yard run, easy, super fast, right here. Cover through safety. Got to go the other way. It's pretty. It's pretty easy. Like I said they didn't tackle the quarterback. I got to keep it too slow i didn't want to take the chance of the pitch but it have been a loss here we go we got the you know the outside you know, coverage outside easy so next up we're going to pick the pa curl so you know against cover three you can do a couple different things motioning mccaffrey over uh is the one that has to be that way pretty much every time other than that i mean i could streak this guy i could put uh this guy on a streak because all i'm really trying to do is uh is create separation and space for uh, McCaffrey anyway <laughs> to get outside of cover threes uh, as far as cover one though um, if you run into a cover one you're going to want to put this guy either on an in route or you're going to want to drag him whatever you're going to want to get him out of the way a slant um, because you're really just trying to turn up the field and to occupy the safety you're going to want to streak Olsen once again so but this is still a cover three I'm um, just showing you it doesn't really matter like I said it's really tight you know what I'm saying like that coverage got tighter so to me ultimately it's probably best to keep him on a streak um, so that you can keep that cover three uh, safety or that cover three outside corner at bay uh, but it's like I said it's not gonna matter because this this throw as long as you pass lead it outside you're gonna steal that every time this motion is gonna match um, some other motions that I do in this formation to an extent or at least it can um, so it's a good it's a good setup play 
Uh, but either way, like I said, I mean, this is just, woo. <laughs> He's like a mile away. So you definitely don't want to run cover one against this. You can even get a window in cover two. Um, you know, a cover two man. Uh, it's just going to be a lot tighter, and you're going to have to really, you know, like I said, you're going to have to throw it a little bit earlier. But you can see, even in cover two man, you're still going to have that opportunity to make a big play. Next up, we got the PA tight end slide. This play here, you can run just like this. Sometimes it's good to move McCaffrey over. It'll mirror some other plays from this formation, but you can see how it just gets him out into the into the flats a lot quicker. But that was a full sprint by the linebacker. He's still got five yards though. But you don't have to do that. You can leave it as is, and he'll still, you know, he'll get open under a lot of coverages like he did right there. Steal that up the sideline real quick. Um, you know, so it's to me, it's I can't say it's necessarily bad to do that, but it don't really matter. Like I said, you got a good play either way. I mean, 10 to 15 yards either way. But if it's a man coverage, it might be beneficial. You might still be able to beat with that. You know, with a, you might be able to beat that man coverage either way. But like I said, it doesn't even seem to matter. I'm getting the same, get uh, maybe a few more yards if I if I motion them out. But then you kind of give the play away to an extent. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. Another really good play here. I mean, the fullback's gonna gonna seal the edge and act as an additional blocker. Um, once again, I don't really have my fastest receiver running this, but uh, that would be helpful. You just put, uh, make sure your, your slot's your most athletic receiver. Um, and like I said, I mean, you're seeing, you know, the blocking here is just setting up perfectly. So this is, I mean, to get to house call this with, with Hogan's really impressive. <laughs> so definitely, without a doubt, a really good run. Next up, we got the bench pivot. So this play right here, I mean, I don't really have to make any adjustments. I like the X route. That's going to be my first read. Um, it's just a unique looking uh, read structure. With um, with It's basically just a cover two concept, but you can tell it looks a little bit different. You can put the um, the RB route on a streak, and it'll help pull those coverages. But ultimately, I'm just going, you know, like I said, it's a cover two play. You know what I mean? You got, your, you got Olsen, who's your, who's your deep cover two play, and then you got your out route, which is your cover three play. Next up, we got the corner strike. So all I'm going to do is put Hogan on a streak, and then I got my high low underneath. Hogan just pulls back if it's a cover three or a cover, you know, cover three or cover two or man, it's going to be same pretty much every time. Cover three, it's going to be the flat route. So a real easy play. Like I said, the uh, the RB route just pulled back for cover three, and then I didn't hold it. I can all but block the running back. He's not really going to do much for me because I'm splitting the field in half and just kind of throwing to what's open over here. But you can see that flat route is going to be a good catch and run. So if it's there, take it. Next up, we got the verticals. Here I'm going to put X on a drag, motion out this receiver, and that's it. That's all I got to do. The B route will get open underneath coverages a lot of times, really quick and easy. Your drag is going to be the check down. It'll come open in this area after all the after all the um, the zones are vacated. And then you can see if you have a cover one man or cover zero, you can have a big play up the sideline to the uh, the wheel route. That's going to be your best man beater as well as the uh, the drag. So here we go. I can tell I'm going to have RB. Like I said, there's too much there for, for you know, those two routes are too close together for the, the defender to choose. So whichever defender that the the, the, um, the user defender chooses, you pretty much hit the other one inside. One of those should be open pretty much every time. So like I said, right here, just waiting for him to clear. And then you have a real easy shot over the middle.
Looks like we got the Z spot. Just gonna put the B route on a streak, and then I'm reading A, which is open right away here. Um, if he's open, I'm gonna take him. If he's not, the B route will be open over the top of him. Not the B route. I mean the RB route. But either way, like I said, if it's there, you know, like I said, there he's not, so I gotta hold it. It was a bad throw. It's typically gonna be a little bit further outside, so I tried. I meant to say the RB route. We're just playing the A versus the RB route. So like I said, right here, it's a blitz. You know, we're just gonna take what we can get. And if it's not him, he's going to be the RB route. RB route will be better against man and cover two. Although that's a cover three, but just the way that it, it worked out, you know, with the spacing, it was it was perfect. So made that play. And then obviously the uh, the check down or the... Uh... Next up, we got the Ravens curl. But yeah, against off cover man, like man one, it's going to be a lot easier to get that space. As you can see right there, I mean, this is really going to be best against man cover one and man zero. Uh, but against man two, it plays really tight because they have the safety help. But out on an island like this, I mean, you can even throw it early uh, when they make that first break. And they'll usually cut in front of the cornerback like a, like, a, like a slant. Like I said, I can make that read like right there. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to wait for him to even go outside. If I want that quick, I can hit that quickly like that. If you're calling a play like this, you're really just running it for, for one option. Uh, which is going to be this outside route, and like I said, you're pretty much just watching the cornerback. If he's facing the if he's facing the QB, he's pretty much going to cut in on it every time. And if he's not, if he's waiting for that out route, we said right there. You know what I'm saying? He's facing in, so he's waiting for that. Uh, he's waiting for that to happen, and then you can pretty much get big plays out of it pretty much every time. So watch the cornerback. Lab this. I like said if he's not facing in, like I right said, he's facing in. Say he's waiting to hesitate, waiting to jump on that route, and then I'm just, you know, hitting him outside for a big play. I'm getting 50 yards on this against cover one pretty easily. Same thing with man uh, zero, but against the press, it doesn't typically work the same way. Next up, we got the RPO read bubble. If you have a man coverage, the out route is a pretty good option. As you can see right here, uh, that wasn't even a man coverage. Cover three, cover four. Um, it's a really good option to go the other way other than the bubble screen. But typically, I mean, I like the bubble screen. I mean, right here we have a, looks like I have a cornerback blitz. But like I said, that out route is, is going to be a really good option. Uh, nine times out of ten, and he fumbles after he gets a really big play. Typically, if he's even with the cornerback or the cornerback's playing off, it's pretty much a good option. You know what I mean? Or if you have like a, an X-Factor receiver with, uh, with out route specialist or whatever that's called. Uh, but if he's if he's outside, like here he's outside a little bit, so I don't think I'm typically going to get that look. And then, like I said, I have this really good uh, screenplay on the other side as well. So to me, a really good play, really good in red zone. Um, you know, it doesn't re really work the best against cover two, which a lot of people will run. Uh, you also got the run play, obviously, which is a good play. So you really have a lot of options on this play. So I'm reading, I got a blocking advantage over here, so I'm reading that this, the screenplay would be the best option. Uh, but the, I'm sure the out route got open as well. So once again, I got three guys on the right side, so that's not the best option. Here we got a cornerback blitz again. Um, so that obviously, I mean, if it was a, if it was any you know a man coverage or whatever, it would have worked out probably as well. Right here, he's playing off. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got that option really quick. I mean, there's just so many good things going on in this play. Next up, out of the shotgun bunch open offset, we have the RPO read wide receiver screen. Um, I find it's best. I mean, if you have more. You know, receivers, then you have blockers on the outside. Uh, I find it's best just to hit that route. Like I said, I have three out there. So if I have two defenders out there, it's best. I'd obviously, I have an advantage. Um, you know, so I'm really just making a count. Like I said, I got three guys. And there he actually went inside. The blockers didn't do anything, though. Like, help me out, blockers. You know what I mean? But it still got me a couple yards. So like I said, once again, make a count. There's three defenders in the box. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to hit it with the, uh, with the inside zone. Just hold the A button. Didn't get a ton, but there was a hole there. I just didn't hit it. Next up, we got the four verticals. Just, uh, just put the Y. I mean, to me, just put the Y route on. on you can leave it as is. The drag's okay, but I like putting the Y on a slant. It's a little bit more aggressive. Um, like I said, ultimately, you're crossing those routes for the user. And then if you have a cover three, this guy's really good outside. You could also put the... Um, the X route on a comeback, in this case it's a man coverage, although the slant's going to do okay against man coverage. Ultimately, um, you know, the comeback's going to be better. 
if you catch a man coverage. Ready, 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 ready. But um, there I forgot to do it. And you can see, like, it's, like I said, the slant's still really good. Comes open underneath all the coverages. But those are really your three options. I should say four options. Okay. Cover, th I mean, the, the, the running backs, all, uh, the RBs only for cover three, but you have, you know, three options aside from this and every other coverage. So, comeback route to X for man, slant or drag for man, and uh, A, you know, A and, a and the Y route, you know, they're, they're both meant to uh, split the user, and then I get a bad throw. <laughs> but then the, and the RB route... So, come back to the X, slant the Y. Those are both good man beaters. And then Olsen, Olsen versus Y against the cover, against the user. And then RB for cover three. Next up, we got the QB draw. This play right here, I mean, you still have a run play in your arsenal. I wouldn't recommend doing it very often, but if you're coming out in a lot of empty packages, you want to keep your opponent honest so they can't come out in uh, too big of... Uh, too big of uh, pass defensive sets with just three down linemen and stuff like that. You could always hit them with a QB draw. Next up, we got the RPO alert screen. So once again, I mean, you just have a really good opportunity to um, to hit them with. I mean, the screen I typically would only do if they close the defense in, which you'll see people do because they remember this play from last year. As you can see right here, I mean, it's it's this, the screen's probably the best here. You have a lot of blockers on the one side, uh, but other than that, I mean, the inside zone's going to be really good. So it's going to be a hard play to stop if you use it at the right times. So when they close in the defense, when they when they pinch to bring in, then you're going to want to hit them with the inside with the uh, with the outside um, screens. Other than that, if they don't hit them with the inside zone, except we got the dagger. Just put the A on a uh, streak, put the Y on a on a drag, and that's pretty much your play right there. Just wait for this B route to get open outside. You know, he'll, he can get some big catch and runs. I don't know, that was a bad throw though. Here we got a double safety blitz. I don't really think this play has too much of a great man beater option. I would say if anything, put the um, put the uh, the X route on a comeback route so you have that option. So now he's now he's a good check down. Just put him on that comeback route. He's a, he's gonna like I said, if it's a man, you know he'll come back to that. That was actually bad timing by me, but it still worked out. Because ultimately these crossing routes don't really beat man too well anymore. Except here we go. We got that. You know, just hit that comeback route. That wasn't because of how close I am to the sideline. It's not even a really good comeback route. It's more like a, like a hangman route, which is not not that effective. <laughs> so, but ultimately, like I said, against zones, this is the play I'm going for anyway, uh, which can be a good catch and run type of play. Next up, we got the fade smash. If it's a cover two, the uh, the Y route's still going to be very good. As you can see right here, I mean, it just gets outside the coverage. Uh, but ultimately, I'd say it's pretty much just a cover two play at this point. So like I said, it's pretty much just a cover two play here. Looks like we have. Uh, I'll take the come the check down the comeback route there. Next up, we got the level sale. This play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I mean, I'm getting a big play, but it's definitely. Ooh, I think it's fumbled. It's definitely a really good play though down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs. On the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously all these checkdowns on the right side. One of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> one of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. If you don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater. Uh, than just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up, we got the bench swap. Let's go ahead and pick that. So I just want to put the A on a streak. I mean, I'm just trying to get the running back open anyway. <laughs> so it's really, you know, it's just about that play. It's it's the running back versus the route over the top. You got a bench switch on the other side. So if you're more comfortable running that concept, you can. I mean, it's a good concept as well. Um, but uh, so you just want to split the field in half pre-snap. That's going to be the best thing I can say. 
decide where you're going pre-snap. And like I said, I have three receivers on the right side, so to me, typically I'm going to go right side. But the bench switch is a really good play. So I got, I mean, I got three wide receivers on the right side, so typically that's the best spot for the play. And my playmaker, my running back's on the right side too, so it's a good option. So just make your determination pre-snap. I think the bench switch is a really good concept this year, though. Like, it's a really good concept. So to me, the bench switch might be the better side, but, you know, it's really up to you to decide what you like to run better. But the bench switch is dirty. It's super dirty. Like I said, it's cover three. It's beating outside cover three. It doesn't matter. Like I said, bench switch this year is on point. Next up, we got the... Next up, we got the corner and goes. This is going to be a good cover one man play. So just pick one of these guys and move them out. That's it. That's going to be your guy. <laughs> I'll put him on a smart route. Doesn't really matter though. I'll put him on a smart route. It's going to beat cover one man. Um, as long as he didn't get jammed up there. Like there he got jammed up. He still made the play, but you saw how he got he got hit a little bit coming off the coming back onto his break. So that could be the only difference. Like I said, I can put, um, you know, I can put the uh, the B route on a, on, a, on a smart route too. It doesn't really matter. But like I say, you you you're just getting, you know, you have, I'm having to body it. I wish I had my fastest guy over there. It's not quite as reliable as it might normally be. Like right there, now there he didn't get hit, so obviously that's the play. You don't even have to motion him out. I mean, you could just put the smart route like it is. You know what I'm saying you don't have to you really don't have to worry about that but you know if he doesn't get hit coming out of the break and he's gonna be gone every time so it's typically you know essentially just a man beater play and then you have your zig too I mean your zig underneath you know that's a good man beater check down so you got a lot of options but they're all man options <laughs> that's the thing I guess your slant would probably be your only, you know, the A route's probably your only, it's not even a slant really, but, I mean, it's a, it's a man beater too, but that's probably your best option against zone. Next up, we got the QB power. Similar play I already showed, it's just there's no, there's no, you know, looping motion, which helped out. He, he, the, the looping, uh, you know, the, the slot receiver coming across really made this um, a little bit more dynamic because it was an extra blocker. So you can recreate that by motioning over, um, you know, motioning over one of the blockers and just giving yourself an extra blocker. So now I have another guy at the point of attack. And you can see how I could just, I just got a, a much bigger lane right at the center. You don't want to run this into blitzes and you don't want to bring this guy across in a man coverage. But other than that, I mean, it's really uh, another good wrinkle if you have a fast QB. As you can see, I get another big play, but I mean, quarterbacks fumble. So you know, remember that before you pick this play. Next up, we got the Y sale. This play right here is really all about the table route to the running back. Um, but if he's not there, I mean, the tight end over the top shoes is going to be pretty good. You can also drag the Y route. Um, that's just another good another good option, especially if it's a man coverage. But you can see, like, the separation by dragging the Y route uh, is, is about as good as it's going to get. You're going to have, um, you know, three receivers. One of them is going to be open between the tight end. Yeah, the running back and the Y route. One of the three is going to be open pretty much every time. And you can see how they drop back to the tight end here. You just take the running back. So it's a really, really simple play. Simple read. Um, just reading the inside receivers. You're not really reading the outside receivers. Uh, although the, the, that one outside receiver um, can do a pretty good job. I mean, that's, that's you know, they're, they're stretching the field mostly. But one of your check downs is going to be the square route. You could also, if it's man coverage, you don't really have a lot of man beaters. So you could put them on a comeback route just in case you get a man like... You know, you might like right there. I should have threw the, the A route. I just was trying. I was I was reading the comeback because I was putting my focus there. But without a doubt, I mean, obviously, against zone, the the, the tight end um, is definitely going to be. It's going to be the tight end and running back. Like right here. This is my check down. The square route was coming across the field, but I'm talking too damn much. So since you don't really have a, a ton of man beaters, you can put the you can make that comeback route your man beater. And then um, you know there. That, I guess that might have been a man coverage. I really wasn't paying attention talking too much but do that one more time so that's definitely uh, a zone so we're gonna our man so like I said that that square ends pretty good you can also make him a comeback route next up we got the Y sale it's another play it's really just about getting the ball to the running back the a route over the top of it is a really good man beater play so if you get a man be a man play it might be better to do that 
The Y route also is a good man play, so to me, those might be better options. But ultimately, I'm just trying to get to the running back underneath the zone so he can make a nice catch and run. My check down is most likely going to be the square route. As you can see, I mean, he's just hoping late. That was a nice blitz. I had to get rid of it a little bit early. But typically, your opponent will leave the center of the field by the time that the... Uh, that the square route enters it and you can see he usually gets inside I mean that was a good play knocked it out but he usually gets inside for a nice easy catch next up we got the level sale this play right here I mean it's pretty much just trying to get it to the running back in space uh, for a good catch and run you know most coverages he'll get open for that <coughs> Other than that, I mean, you have, if it's, he's not open, which, like I say, typically is, although they're <laughs> through a little bit late, you're pretty much reading tight end, running back tight end, and then if they're not open, you have a couple of, you know, a series of levels, check downs on the other side. Next up, we got the mesh. You can motion out the McCaffrey, but I find that you have a pretty similar setup on the other side, and I just think it's better just to follow that. As you can see right here, I mean, he's going to get open outside of cover threes. Uh, the other guy can get open inside of cover threes, which it looks like we might have here. Probably a cover three right here. But, you know, the running back's a pretty good read as well. Um, as you can see, I mean, you know, it's just there's not as much people over there pulling coverage. So to me, you're better off just kind of working the, uh, the exact same angle on the other side. So, like I said, right here, I mean, that's cover cover three. I don't really have a great receiver running these routes over there, but you can see it works. <coughs> so, here it looks like we got a man coverage. There, I didn't even motion out McCaffrey. You can see he had uh, he had an advantage. So, you know, there's definitely routes on both sides. Next up, we got the shotgun wing. We got the Raven QB power. Play right here, I mean, you just have, you have really good blocking. You just need a mobile QB. And then obviously you probably want to slide if you're going into a big hitter like that. Um, but like I said, there's really, you know, that that, that running back there can really spring you. Uh, if I had a, a much faster, you know, if I had the actual Ravens Q, QB, if I had Lamar Jackson, I'd probably have even bigger runs here. But you can see, like I said, you can fumble, so be careful. Make sure you uh, slide. Next up, we got the read option. right here to me this the way this set, this sets up you probably want to keep it with the quarterback the most the formation really sets up though for um you know handing it to the quarter for keeping with the quarterback because of the two tight end set so it's going to be easiest to keep with the quarterback but you do have you know the inside zone going the other way so it's a really good play because you have big you have big possibilities to both sides so let's do that again said so we're just you know we're just sprinting to the edge you know we got you're going you're sprinting one way or the other it's gonna be hard for the user to follow it because you can go big play both sides next up out of the strong wing we have the counter weak it's pretty easy I mean you don't really have you know too much um, you know it's a single read and that's pretty much all you gotta do you just gotta read the defensive end in front of you uh, to, the, to the direction the ball's going if he hesitates a lot of times you got to take it outside. If he if he crashes outside, you got to take it inside. It's really simple. These counter plays are really easy to run, and they're really effective. As you can see, you know, by by the by the mammoth by the mammoth runs that I'm getting, I actually ran right at that defender, but I still got 10 yards. So here we go, crashing inside, crashing outside. You know what I'm saying? I just I'm just reading what they're doing, and I'm doing the opposite. It's that simple. I'm just reading what that what that defensive end does. Right here, hesitates. I know I'm going outside, although I got I got smacked. So here we go. Like I said, hesitates. Take it outside. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 get wide. Get wide. You know what I'm saying? If he if he hesitates, that defensive end hesitates. I'm going outside. Next up, we got the fullback dive. Typically, you want to put a running back at this spot, but it's a good inside run play. You can see even the animation's fast. You'll get a good couple yards from this every time. If you have a good, um, you know, a good uh, running back in this position, you can even get you can get even more. But it's a really, really glitchy play. Like I said, look out! Look out! Turbo speed the, the handoff is. I mean, you're pretty much getting the ball a yard or two up the field when you get it. 
So definitely one of the better inside um, run plays, especially when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to uh, short yardage situations, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a couple yards. It's, you know, fourth and one, third and one, you should get that just about every time. Next up, we got the halfback toss. Nothing really to say or do here. I mean, this play is just, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, these toss plays are all pretty, pretty crazy. Um, you know, you can just, you, there's no real setup here. If you want to, you can motion out Thomas here. Hopefully, you know, just let him get set. Hopefully, he can hold that cornerback down. That's the idea. You can see I got much better blocking that time as far as three guys to three blockers. So that's probably the best way to do it. Before it was like three blockers or three three defenders to two blockers. Now I'm getting a little bit, um, you know, obviously a little bit stickier blocking too. I mean, that tight end's gonna stick that cornerback easily. But like I said, you can run just like this. I just don't find, you know, sometimes I feel like you're gonna have to cut inside more. You're not gonna get that outside like you want where the big play's at. So there we go. I motion blocked him that time. Hopefully it doesn't it doesn't set me up. I mean, it's better it's better if you let him get set. But you know, I guess I'm just trying to knock through this quick. <laughs> Pretty much. So let's do this one more time. Like I said, I'll let him get set. Let him get uh, let him take it on. And then ooh, oh man, McCaffrey's so nice. I mean, just let me tell you, stick skills with him is just is just dirty. Next up out of the strong wing, we got the PA Raven boot. This is a very interesting play in the term that I get to tell this guy when to release, which I think is really cool. I can't believe that, that they haven't had that in more plays this year. Is that I get to tell him when to leave, so I can basically get him open by, you know, essentially waiting for the for the blocking to, to, to work out to the way I want. Either I can angle it as far as how I want him to block, or I can angle it as far as... Still a really cool concept. I'm hoping that there's more plays like this. As you can see right here, I mean that's you know definitely got uh, got the option. I mean it's like running it's like running an option, but in a passing formation. Here go, here go, here go. So right here he's kind of extra, but there's a defender there anyway. So I might as well just let him do his thing, kick it up to the receiver. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's a defender in the air, there's no point in letting me making me release him. Ready. Ready. So here we go once again. He's on a guy. So I'm just gonna let him do his thing. I'll just throw it to the receiver. You know what I'm saying? He's blocking the guy one on one, so I'll just let them let him have that. Next up out of the weak wing, we got the post shot. It's a really good cover four one play touchdown. You don't have to make any adjustments. It works as is. You just have to get a good pass and a bullet pass lead uh, once he gets you know inside of that uh, that one safety. As you can see, he gets passed. Um, you can also bring him inside if it's like a cover three. Uh, he'll get up the cover three seam a lot of times, but he won't get gone. He won't get gone if you bring him in like this. Uh, ultimately, this is, like I said, this is a play. You would bring him inside if it's something other than cover four. And then you also have some really good check downs with the crossing routes. But if you want to try to beat cover four, you have that option. Um, you just have to kind of... You know, like I said, I, I kind of got caught up on my running back, and you got to get a good throw. You know what I mean? Like you have to you have to get it out there, wait for him to get inside of that safety. Let's go and let's watch the replay. I don't want to get too far back. That's why I was trying to shuffle inside to try to get a shorter lane. But I'm essentially just waiting for this guy to get uh, inside of this free safety, like he does right here. Once that free safety has to turn his hips, I can throw it. But like I said, I'm caught up, and I didn't want to have a bad throw. But he's inside, and he's way past this safety, so just bullet and pass lead away outside. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.